Okay, Steve, I'm not pinning you that hard. I surrender. Help. Bobby. <laughs> now, you're in the perfect position to give me a corner reversal throw. Oh, your knees restricting my breathing. Now you lift me up with your leg, like this? Or I could catch you off your guard and kiss you. Hello, Sir Gerald. Am I uh, interrupting? Yes. Thank God. Uh, since uh, Willie Garvin's gone gallivanting off to South America, she oh, insists on practicing on me. It's Central America. And I was just showing you how to disarm an attacker with a knife, darling. Modesty, my dear. You are a sight for sore eyes. I hope you can stay and join us for breakfast. I thought we'd have it here on the penthouse roof today. I can't stay long, I'm afraid. I wonder if you could both dine with me on Thursday. Afterwards, I'd like you to meet an old friend of mine, Dr. Aronson. Aronson? Isn't he the historian who translated those Roman scrolls they found? Where was it? In Musa, in southern Algeria. Yes, that's him. Is this business? No, just, uh, well, it's probably nothing. Aronson phoned me a couple of days ago, very agitated and enigmatic. He seems to think there's something wrong at the dig over there. What kind of something? He wouldn't say. But he begged me to send someone out there to take a look. I wondered if you might think about paying a visit, Modesty. It's a long time since I was in the desert. Aronson sounds a bit vague. I know, but he's a friend and I'd like to help. I can't do it officially. It's not exactly MI6's field. All right. Let's talk to him. Who's financing the dig? Sir Howard Prestane. Prestane the industrialist. Weren't you up at Oxford with him, Sir Gerald? <laughs> Back in the Dark Ages. Prestane and I rode for the college. We don't often move in the same circles now. He's quite reclusive, isn't he? Yes. Especially since his wife died. He spends his money on good causes rather than himself. I hate it when millionaires set a good example. <laughs> What's left for the rest of us? <laughs> Thursday, then. Seven o'clock? We can take the Jensen. Take a left here, Modesty. Okay. Hmm. So... How exactly is he connected to this dig? Uh, he isn't really. The leader of the dig, Professor Tangy, and he are old friends. I'm still not clear about what he thinks may be wrong at uh, whatever it's called. It's called Musa, after a Roman tribune in Numidia soon after the Third Punic War. Oh. The writer of the scrolls, in fact, Domitian Mus. It's rather like Petra in Jordan, temples, amphitheatre, the lot. And it's been covered in sand for 1,500 years. It's in uh, the middle of the Sahara, hundreds of miles from the nearest town. What could possibly be wrong? Labour troubles? I doubt it. The team is Professor Tangi and his students. On the phone, Aronson just kept insisting there was something amiss. He said the letters from Tangi aren't right. He thinks they're concealing something. So why doesn't he go out himself? Bad heart. It's pretty hot out there at the moment, I'm afraid. Are you sure you wouldn't mind modesty? It's probably a wild goose chase. I don't mind. I'd like to see a dig. Well, if you agree, and I don't want you to feel obliged, we can set up with Prestane for you to hitch a ride. A supply plane flies out once a week from Algiers. There's number eight. <clears throat> There's someone on the doorstep. Is that Aronson? No, Aronson's a little chap. That man must be... Six and a half feet. Good Lord, he's a gorilla. Let's go and see who he is. Ah, oh, are you 
you Dr. Aronson? I'm afraid not. We're calling on him. So am I. I've just rung the bell four times. He doesn't seem to be at home. He was here when I phoned earlier. He's expecting us. I understood he was expecting me, too. But I prefer not to wait, if you'll excuse me. Shall we say who called? Armitage, of the British Museum. If you would tell him I'll ring tomorrow, that would be very kind. Good night. You didn't recognize that man, Sir Gerald? No, I don't think so. Try the bell, Steve. Our, our British Museum friend rang four times. So he said. Let's just try it again. There aren't any lights, either. I can't believe he's gone out. Hang on. This should do it. You can't do that. It's not even a misdemeanor yet. If we just happen to find the door open... It's pitch dark. There's a light switch here somewhere. Oh, my God. It's Aronson. His neck's broken. I suppose he fell down the stairs. Oh, the poor fellow. I knew his heart had been bad for a long time. Or, or, or he could have simply tripped and fallen. I... I'm so sorry, Sir Gerald. Who should we phone? No one. He lives alone. A widower, no children. I, I'll see to all that. In fact, why don't you go home? There's no need for you to be caught up in all this. Can't we help? Can't we... Uh, no, really, I'd rather you went home. Good evening, madam. Sir? Good evening, Wilson. I wish we hadn't left him like that. I don't think we had a choice. Poor Sir Gerald. In his job, he has few enough friends. Do you think it's something to do with the department? I don't know. But you were suspicious about that man. Just my dastardly past, I suppose. I got used to treading carefully. Speaking of which, can you smell something? Perfume? And cigarette smoke. Have you forgotten your key? Shh. What is it? The door's been open since we left. How can you tell? I always leave a hair or a thread over the jam. Avoid surprises. We have visitors. Stand back, darling. Hello, princess. Willie, love. Willie <laughs> Garvin. Modesty was convinced you were a burglar. <laughs> Hello, Steve. Sorry to sneak in on you like that. Hope you weren't too worried. That's all right, but I wasn't expecting to see you for a while. Who's your friend? This is Dinah Pilgrim. Hello, Dinah. I'm Modesty Blaze. And this is Steve Collier. Hello. Willie's told me about you, Modesty. This is very kind of you. Dinah's in a bit of a jam. Oh? I found her on a beach in the Pearl Islands. She was being kidnapped. Oh. I saw the old thing through binoculars. Too far away to stop it, I jumped the two of them as they were taking Dinah back to their boat. From the sound of it, this wasn't local hoods. No. Nah. Someone laid on a big operation... Pretty smooth, too. They were waiting for Dinah and her sister to go somewhere really remote. Then they made their move. It was supposed to look like a sailing accident. Her sister? Yeah. They killed her. Oh. Made it look like drowning. I'm sorry, Dinah. Did you recognise them? No, I'm afraid not. I'm blind. Oh. I wouldn't have noticed. I can pass for sighted if someone guides me. Did anyone see you, Willie? The two goons won't be doing any talking. <laughs> <laughs> but someone must have worked it out. A carload of heavies called at my house when I was out. We had to scarper pretty quick. 
And here we are. He's not telling you the half of it. Someone wants you pretty badly, Dinah. Mm. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I told Willie I'm not an heiress or anything like that. This wasn't a random tourist snatch. They wouldn't have killed Judy. And the goons were Yanks. Any clues? Only that they were professionals. They didn't make any mistakes until they met me. And professionals cost money. What do you do, Dinah? I'm a dictaphone typist. Do you work for an intelligence agency? Could it be industrial secrets? No. We mainly work... worked for utility companies. I mean, Judy and I. I don't know any secrets. All right. Don't worry, Dinah. I know you've had a bad time, but we'll take care of it. What do you mean, take care of it? She means we'll find out who's after you. We might have to go away for a bit, but we'll make sure you're safe. Dinah can stay at the cottage. I'm sure Steve would look after you there. It would be my pleasure, Dinah. And when we find out who is responsible, we'll make sure they never do it again. <laughs> So, Mr. McWetter, I hope you have good news for me. We had a wee problem. The muscle we hired was the best available, but the girl was... rescued. <sighs> Someone killed Margiello with a thrown knife and broke Eddie's neck. They both had guns. I thought at first there must have been several men watching her, but... it looks like there was just one. And, uh... He's got to get all out of the country, but we just missed him. One man who overcomes two armed professionals with nothing more than a knife. Aye. Well, that at least narrows the field of suspects considerably. Oh, we tracked him down. There was an Englishman staying in Puerto Churera. His name is... Let me guess. His name is Willie Garvin. Aye. You already know. This is why I am in charge of the operation, Bagoeta, because I know things. Mr. Garvin is an old acquaintance of mine, and he has a remarkable talent for throwing things. He has a base in England? Yes. Even if he did not, I feel sure he will have brought the girl here. Why do you think that? Because Willie Garvin belongs to Modesty Blaze. And I had the pleasure of meeting Modesty Blaze last night. Rather amusing, eh? Just after I killed Dr. Ellens. feels so peaceful and solid somehow. It is. I think that's why Modesty chose it. Willie won't tell me much about her past. Or his own, come to that. Can you fill me in? Not really. I think for her, what's past is past, and she doesn't like to talk about it. Uh, but I know she had to survive as a child alone in... Middle East refugee camps after the war, and I shudder to think what that must have involved. No family? Oh, not that she can remember. She travelled a lot with an elderly professor from Budapest University. He taught her five languages, and she protected him. 
an inspired teacher. Ah, well, maybe that's why she likes you. <laughs> I have no earthly idea why modesty likes me, Diana. <laughs> I'm just glad she seems to. You know, I've known her less than a year. Oh, I don't know how long it'll last. I, I don't think modesty will ever belong to anybody. Except to Willie, maybe. Perceptive girl, aren't you? You've never been jealous? I can hear it in his voice. Even when he just talks about her. It's almost as though he worships her. Well, that's not far off. Maybe it's that each of them is the only person who really understands what the other has lived through. Ah, oh, I see a rover in the yard. That must be Sir Gerald Tarrant. Modesty said he was dropping in for tea. A sir? Gosh, can I wash and change before I meet him? <laughs> of course. Uh, you can rely on me to smuggle you past them. <laughs> Is there any news about the man we saw at Aronson's that night? No. I gave the police an identikit picture, but they haven't found him. Can I see it? Uh, here we are. Hmm. It would be hard to miss someone who looks like that. Listen, Modesty. I rather thought we'd forget about the Aronson thing. Why? It looks like murder. We know he lied about who he was. Murder is a police matter. I don't understand you, Sir Gerald. He was your friend. Modesty, I want you to forget it. You've enough to think about with Dinah's would-be kidnapper. You know how careful I am. Yes, but even a cat runs out of lives, my dear. Help me take this tray outside. Oh. Dinah loves English tea. It'll be a bonus for her with a courtly old English gentleman like you. <laughs> uh, uh, let her keep her illusions. Don't tell her what ruthless bastard I am. <laughs> Modesty, this is just one of the nicest places I've ever been. Yes, it's just about perfect. The only thing we lack is a swimming pool. Why don't you put one in? Over there, in front of the chestnuts, would do nicely. The problem is, we don't know the run of gas pipes, electricity cables, anything. Well, there must be some way around it. I keep hoping Willie will come up with some sort of clever detector. <laughs> I'm not a magician, Princess. I could check it for you now, Modesty. It's what I do. Find pipes and things for energy companies. Judy used to travel with me. <laughs> Dinah Pilgrim. You said you were a typist. I know. Well, people tend to think I'm crazy if I tell them I locate things by magic. <laughs> well, well. And Steve here is an expert in the study of psychic phenomena. He didn't tell me that for weeks. For the same reason. People look at you funny. So you see, Dinah, no one here is going to think you're a screwball. <laughs> OK. Galvanised steel wire is all I need. Even a coat hanger would do at a pinch. I'll go and poke about in the garage. See what I can find. All right, doll. Tell me what you want me to do. Head me across at right angles to the house wall. And mark whenever I say. OK? Mm -hmm. Stop. Mark this as gas pipe. Depth, six feet. How do you know it's a gas pipe? How does it work, Steve? I don't know. I keep promising myself I'll make a study of it. There's been very little research. It could be some sort of extreme sensitivity. I must get a picture of this. Excuse me. Ready? Extraordinary business. She seems very confident about what she's finding. You know, I was thinking earlier, that young girl seems rather bowled over by Willie. I hope she doesn't get hurt. She's different from Willie's usual girlfriends. It wouldn't astound me if he threw away his address book for Dinah. Really? Would you mind very much? I don't own Willie. If he was happy, I'd be glad for him. I can't quite see him settling down. Why not? It only needs the right girl. Well, you might settle down yourself, of course. I think I'd be relieved. It would remove the nagging temptation for me to make use of your unique talents. 
All things are possible. Dinah, that was wonderful. Now, if we sink the pool a little further from the house, we'll only have to reroute the gas main. Here's a large gin and mix. You've earned it. Thanks. It's the least I can do. You know, that might be why these people want you, Dinah. Don't you think? I, I guess it could be. It never occurred to me. A vicious criminals into water pipes these days. <laughs> do you find other things too? I did precious metals twice. For a company in Alaska. That sounds more likely. We'd know more if we knew where they were operating. Willie, love, are you coming to join us? What's this picture, Princess? The identikit.、Hmm. Sir Gerald must have left it. That's the big man we met at Aronson's the night he died. Why? Do you know him? Yeah, I know him. But it's more than ten years ago. I thought he was dead. He's definitely not dead. What do you know about him? I was gun running off Uruguay. He was the boss. God, he's bad, bad, and lucky. He'd do mad things and get away with them. Is he a killer? He's a freak. Not just to look at, but inside. He could cut you to ribbons in that public school voice. I saw a bloke round on him once. Ever seen a terrier with a rat? It gets the rat by the neck. It flicks it up sharp, breaks the rat's neck. That's what it was like. He picked him up by the neck in one of those giant hands and just shook him. There wasn't a mark on him. Just his neck was broken. Like、uh, poor Doctor Aronson. What was his name, Willie? Delicata. Simon. Delicata. T three Q P M. This is T three Q P O Stroke H P calling. How copy? T three Q P M replying. Reading you good and clear. So tell me, my Highland laddie, how are things in Musa? Has the labour force behaved itself? Hi. Professor Tangy is cooperating now, and his students follow his example. They've cleared the tomb area. They're a wee bit sluggish, but in my opinion, more severe treatment won't make them any faster. They have written their letters home. Aye, and I've read to them. Good. Everything must appear normal. How long would you estimate the job will take? Ah,、uh, anything from a month to five years. We can hardly maintain an appearance of normality for that long. But the girl, if she can do what they claim, we could be finished in a few days. Well, it won't be long now, and then we will see. You found her? I've been watching her, Maguire. She has been employing her talents for the redoubtable Miss Blaze. But Blaze and Garvin are dangerous, and they'll be on their guard. Well, that just adds a little spice to the proceedings. They will be taken care of. Shortly. You're not worried. Worried? <laughs> I wish someone could explain that to me. I've always wondered what it meant. This is T3 QPO stroke HP off and clear. Oui, oui, je comprends.、Uh, vous pourriez le décrire?、Mm. Et il sait rendu? Bon, bon, d'accord. Oui, oui. Merci beaucoup. Princess. That was Claudel of Le Louche's gang in Paris. Said he's had a couple of South American men make inquiries about a missing blind girl. He's got an address in Montmartre.、Mm. They'll be there till tomorrow. Do you think it's genuine? They showed him a photograph. Sounds as though it was Dinah. I didn't tell my contact she was blind. So if they know that, I could be there and back by morning. Princess, I think we should both go. We don't know who we're dealing with. Dinah will be safe here with Steve, and this place is a fortress. Nothing short of a tank could get through those steel screens I've rigged. All they have to do is sit tight. Mmm, 
that smells good. Hi, Steve. Hope you like eggs and bacon. <laughs> Wonderful. Can I help? No, you can't. Everything's under control. Dinah, you're a marvel. Beauty, paranormal gifts, and you fry a mean egg. Not bad for a blind girl, you mean? I meant not bad for a Canadian. <laughs> I hear something. A, a car engine. Oh, it's, it's okay, it's, uh, it's just the post van. You know, it's not fair. Why don't you look awful this morning? Is that how you look? I'm haggard and worn. I didn't sleep a wink clutching Modesty's shotgun to my bosom. I feel rather stupid now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bacon and eggs coming up. <laughs> Dinah, get behind me. Ah, Mr. Collier, I believe. Oh, God, it's you. <laughs> Cautious people, Miss Blaze and young Garvin. Still, one likes a challenge. Like a man armed with a saucepan. They'll be back any second. <laughs> I don't think so. Who do you think sent them scurrying off to Paris? I begin to think their reputation is unwarranted. <laughs> Steve, are you all right? I would say not, Miss Pilgrim. Oh, no, you don't. <gasps> Finally, you are coming with me. has all sources looking for Delicata and the girl, but I fear they've left the country by now. Poor Dinah. At least you're alive, Steve. I can't think why Delicata didn't kill you. I think he thought he had. God, I'm so sorry. I'm so terribly sorry. It's not your fault, Steve. When I rigged those steel screens, I didn't cater for someone like Delicata. And the princess and I fell for the tip of in Paris like a pair of mugs. We should have seen that it was fake just to get us out of the way. Willie, it seemed reasonably likely to be genuine, and he had information that proved they knew about Dinah. Which the kidnappers would have. I should have stayed, like you said. It's my fault. I suggest everyone stop feeling guilty. What none of us could know is that between us, we'd run into two ends of the same operation, Aronson's murder and Dinah's kidnapping. But how on earth? And why, for heaven's sake? Delicata is involved with the dig at Musa. Aronson got wind that something was wrong, and so he killed him. And he wants Dinah because of her ability to locate things. There must be something of great value at the archaeological dig that he thinks only Dinah can find. I suppose we can be pretty sure that's where he's taken her. Modesty, I want to come with you. I don't think this is your thing, darling. You've had quite a beating. I don't care. I heard Dinah cry out when Delicata got her. I still hear it. She's blind. Oh, I know all about being scared, but God alone knows what it's like for her. She'll go out of her mind. Dinah's gutsy. She knows we'll come after her and get her out, no matter what. Sir Gerald, you said that Sir Howard Prestane was financing the dig. How quickly can you get us to see him? Thank you for filling me in, Miss Blaze. Very succinct. It sounds rather far-fetched. Sir Gerald, do you believe these criminals have taken charge at Musa? Yes. Aronson knew Professor Tangy well enough to realise something was wrong with his letters home. Somehow, this man Delicata found out. That's why Aronson was killed. Uh, what do you want me to do? Arrange for the supply plane to take three passengers on the next trip to Musa and put us down in the desert a few miles away. Will the pilot be able to do that? Well, if he can't, no one can. He's among the five best in Europe and the States. I picked him myself. 
when will we hear from you? As soon as there's anything to report. We'll set up a radio link with Sir Gerald's communications room. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid that won't work. They tell me Musa is a dead area. It's something to do with the mountains. That's why we've had to rely on mail. Hmm. There's not much you could do anyway. You'd better give us three weeks. And then, if we haven't heard... You must assume we've failed. Then it'll be up to you. Hey, Willie. Ma'am? <sighs> Hello, Skeet. I didn't know you were the pilot Prestane was talking about. Yeah, it's been a long time. Quite a while. How's the flying business? Regular, ma'am. All right, you folks all set? Yes. Skeet, have you noticed anything odd at this archaeological site? Are there any people there you didn't take out? You know me, ma'am. When did I ever notice anything? I just fly out and fly back. All right. Better get going. Same as ever. An old friend. That's good news. One more on our side. No. Skeet Lowry just flies. We used him a few times in the old days, but he's on nobody's side. He's loyal to the man who pays him. Okay, I think that's it. God, it really is dark here. Steve, we'll find a base that'll give you some shade during the day. That ridge Ski told us about sounds promising. Then we'll set you up with... <gasps> well, well. How nice to see you all again. Welcome to our little band of brothers. Steve? Dinah! Don't move, Steve! I hate to labour a point, but at the first hint of mischief, the girl will be riddled with bullets. There are five machine guns trained on her. Why, Skeet? I fly for the guy who picks up the tab, ma'am. You know that. Put down your gun, Miss Blaze. Very slowly. Likewise, Garvin, with his trusty knife. Mm. That's it. Good. Willie Garvin. Always a pleasure to renew old acquaintance, isn't it? I heard you died in an Indonesian clink. Happily, as you can see... Rumours of my death were somewhat exaggerated. But I'm intrigued to see the changes wrought in you by the infamous Miss Blaze. I think I must save you for later. And Saucepan Man. Hmm. Oh, dear. I really thought you were dead. I'll have to do better next time. Don't hurt him. He's an expert in what you want Dinah to do. The top expert. I'm not sure we need any experts. I didn't actually bring my references with me, but... <laughs> Skeet, take the girl and the guards. McWhorter, search our new recruits, then lock them up in the dormitory cell with the others. I think we're going to have some fun with these three. Radio antenna, sling, anaesthetic. Dear, dear. What is all this, McWhorter? It's the kit I took off Blaze and Garvin. This was in their clothes. A bow and arrow? Where was this? Tubular sections and trouser pocket. Ah. And look, pull off their boot heels, clip them together, and you have an explosive device. Mm -hmm. You can't be too careful with some people. Must you write everything down in that damned notebook? Just procedure, Mr. Delicata. You never know when you might have to refer back to something. I learnt that habit when I was a bairn. And many's a time I've been glad of it. So they are clean now? They're clean. But clean or dirty, they are dangerous. What's to be gained from keeping them alive? I don't expect a limited intellect like yours to appreciate this, McWhorter. But I see no reason why this relatively simple task should not be accomplished with a certain amount of style. Is there something you wish to say? No. Good. Report to me in an hour. Uh, looks like this is the boys' section. Yeah. That must be Professor Tangy over there. I wonder what they did to him. I'll go and see what I can get out of him.
Professor Tang Yi. Mm-hmm. Uh, my name's Steve Collier. <laughs> we seem to have been rather a mess here. I, I wonder if you could tell me what's been happening. I can't just say I'm tired. So much to be done tomorrow. Uh, Professor, listen, we're going to try and get you out of here. If you could No, just... no, no. I shouldn't have done it. Hiding those pages was terribly foolish. I know that now. So tired. What pages? You mean of the scrolls? Uh, uh, what did they say, Professor? So much to be done tomorrow. So tired. <laughs> He doesn't seem all there. The younger ones don't look much better. <sighs> Skeets! Are you sleeping in here overnight? I thought you were on their side. Delicata doesn't like people wandering about at night. It's either here or with McWhirter. I choose here. Uh, how's the sky wagon guarded? Is she tanked up? Come on, Willie! Listen, how much are you getting for this job? Thirty thousand dollars. We'll pay you sixty. You know we're good for it. Even if I said yes, I'm locked in just like you. Delicata doesn't trust anyone. He holds the plugs of the sky wagon overnight. This operation's airtight. Anyhow, I've been paid. You know how it is. I'll bunk down there. Now, folks. Why didn't you break his bloody neck? I would, if it got us somewhere, but it won't. How can you be so damn casual? Because blaming someone or yourself isn't going to help. Oh. The only thing that will help is to stay calm and notice everything. Keep looking for anything that might give us a way out. There's always a way. But we're in the middle of a bloody desert. You made Delicata laugh out there. That might be useful. Can you keep it up? Oh. Oh, I think so. I don't know for how long. You won't have to do it for long. We won't have long if we want to get out of here. Oh, well, look on the bright side, as my old mum used to say. That's better. Come on, let's have a chat with the girls. Hello, love. Willie! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Looks like we're in it up to our necks again. Come and sit here. We need to talk. Hello, Dinah. Steve, I thought he'd killed you. Oh, I'm, I'm fine. I'm just sorry. He, he was a bit big for me. Oh, Steve. We're all okay. How about you? Oh, they treat me all right. They can't afford not to. But the others, Professor Tangy and his team, I think they tortured them. They won't even talk to me. They're like zombies. Did you manage to get anything out of them? Uh, Professor Tangy said something about uh, hiding some pages. I, I think he meant the scrolls, and I suppose that means if Aronson translated them, then he must have known about it. Uh, whatever it is. It means there's something here valuable enough to corrupt men like Tangy and Aronson and attract criminals on the level of Delicata. God, I've been stupid. That radio in Delicata's room. What about it? Skeet works for the man who picks up the tab. Nobody else. Isn't Delicata picking up the tab? No. Sir Howard Prestane is. He picked Skeet himself. He told me. And? And they were waiting for us. So someone must have told them we were coming. Oh. And that same someone told Skeet to drop us in their laps. There's only one bastard could do that. Prestane. Prestane told us Musa was a dead spot for radio. That was to stop us having a link with Sir Gerald. It's not a dead spot. There was a radio in that room of Delicata's. But he can't get away with it. Sir Gerald knows we're here. Everyone knows Professor Tangy's here. How could he get away with it, even if he kills the lot of us? A Marie Celeste mystery. Or a cave collapses and buries us all. Oh. He'll have given orders for Delicata to kill everyone once Dinah's turned up the loot. <sighs> And he'll get away with it precisely because who'd suspect a great industrialist and philanthropist like him? Looks like I'd better hold off finding that treasure. Can you fool him, love? I reckon so. They mark out an area for me to cover each day. I only do three spells of half an hour. That's the most I can manage. How long will it take you to cover the whole of Musa at that rate, Dinah? I can't see how big it is, but McWhirter says another ten days. Delicata. Yes. Delicata what? Look, Dinah and I don't mind missing the silent councils of war, but we do want to know what the hell to expect. So, Delicata 
What? Delicat is employed by Prestain. He is in charge of this part of the operation. So? So, Delicat is a very clever man who can do any job he's given and still find time to do it in a way that amuses him. Dinah said ten days. That doesn't mean we have ten days to find a way out. Delicata will start having his fun long before then. Why else do you think he's kept us alive? fastest you can go. I have to concentrate or I don't get any. I wonder how hard you are trying. Maybe hearing one of your friends scream would enhance your concentration. Mm? If you really want this stuff. Oh, there's some iron down there. How deep? Shallow. Two feet. You and you over here. Pass. Yes. What is it? Miss Pilgrim thinks there is some metal here. We'll let your friends dig it up. McWhorter, take her back to her cell. <clears throat> Modesty. Any idea we're going to get out of here? Not yet. Too many guards with machine guns. <clears throat> We've tried bribing them, but they're too scared of Delicata. We need a way out of the cell, and it's harder with Tangy and the students. You mean... Get all of them out as well? Are you mad? If we leave them, they're dead. Modesty, that's all very laudable. But the professors practically gaga and the others aren't much better. How on earth? I don't know yet, Steve, but let's not be defeatist. Not until we absolutely have to. Oi! You! Saucepan man! Yes? Delicata wants you. Me? I. Oh. Don't keep him waiting. You keep going, lassie. He's no interested in you. Yet. Not so fast. That's a Montrachet 59, the greatest Chardonnay in the world. Oh. Rough treatment will kill it. Uh, right. I, I mean, sorry. Is that, uh, all right? Hmm. I expect an intellectual like yourself read the translation of the Musa scrolls when they were published. Well, uh, no. Uh, statistics are more my line, really. But our professor and his friend Aronson decided to withhold the most interesting part. Domitian Mus described in great detail the riches he amassed from all over Africa. Gold and silver, weapons, ivory, and my favourite part, the fabled jewels of the Garamantes. Oh. I quote, Carbuncles of great purity and of such size that a man can scarce contain ten in his two hands, and of these there are close to six hundred. Carbuncles? You mean rubies? Gosh. As you so eloquently put it, gosh. Even at a conservative estimate, their value today runs into millions sterling. But despite all this delicious detail, the one thing our industrious Roman forgot to write down was where he put the bloody thing. <laughs> Do you know, Collier... That when I was a young man at college, I was dubbed King Kong. Oh, really? Uh, that's not very, um, kind. Are you familiar with the works of Hausmann? Uh, bits. Uh, the troubles of our proud and, uh, something dust are from eternity. <laughs> that sort of thing. Bit morbid, really. <laughs> Angry dust. It suited my youthful torment. I used to look at my graceless shape and agree with Mr. Houseman. There's this to say for blood and breath, 
They give a man a taste for death. Well, as I say, it's a bit morbid. But then I discovered something. That not only was I rather clever and quite enormously strong, <laughs> I was also to a large degree invulnerable. I could sustain blows that would have maimed or killed another man. <laughs> I didn't feel pain. So I changed. Quite radically. Well, uh, that must have been nice. Uh, farewell, Mr. Houseman, and all that. <laughs> farewell to Mr. Houseman, indeed. Except that to some extent I retained the taste for death. Mm. <laughs> Just not my own. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, a bit alarming, in a way. You're very shrewd. It is indeed alarming. For you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dinah. Hi, Steve. Are you all right? You look done in. Oh, just tired. Why aren't you with the others? I've just been with Della Carter. I think I amuse him. I hope so, anyway. What's that? Willie started making weapons. I'm trying to put an edge on these. That's a Stone Age arrowhead. He says the site is full of weapons. They're digging this stuff out all the time. Don't think I'm being negative, but what use are arrows against machine guns? <laughs> Don't ask me. But I think they've got something in mind. They never give up, do they? I wish I was less useless. Well, you're not useless. Far from it. No, I don't have courage myself, but I know it when I see it, and you've got it. Oh, don't be silly, Steve. You were the one who squared up to Delicata with a one-pint milk pan. <laughs> I was petrified. My family crest is two white feathers couchant on a field of bilious yellow. <laughs> Our motto is, don't shoot, I'm coming out with my hands up. <laughs> Listen, I, I've got to go back to the chain gang in a minute, but I know divining wears you out, but I've got an idea. Look at this, Princess. Ah, oh, Roman sword. Must be the eye in the diner detected. Maybe we could... Uh... Nope, too late. Word is coming. Oh. What have we here? A Roman sword. Don't be getting any ideas about that, Galvin. Come and take it, then. <laughs> Think I was born yesterday. Throw it on the ground. I know your reputation for sneak, Blaze. You were quite something in the old days. Pity you're on the wrong side of this one. Keep digging, Garvin. The wrong side? I hope you've got a long spoon, McWhirter, if you're supping with Delicata. You think he'll let you go free at the end of this? If it was just you and Garvin, lassie, I'd sleep awful light. But you're carrying too much weight this time, eh? An old professor and his boys all scared out of their wits. Even if you could get past the guns, you've got desert for 500 miles in every direction. The heat, the thirst, the snakes. <laughs> Modesty, I get the feeling Delicata's working up to something. At lunch, he was talking about his taste for death. I think he's about ready to indulge in it. Oh, God. We won't let it go that far. Have you noticed how McWhirter keeps looking at me? Yes. Well, surely you don't think you can seduce him onto our side? No, but he's given me an idea. We still need to find a way out of this cell. We might have found something, or uh, rather, Dinah has. Along the back wall of the main dormitory here, there's a buried aqueduct. I asked Tangy about the water supply in Roman times, and he said it was the Fagara system. Oh. Now, I'm, I'm not even sure what that is, but whenever you get two Romans together, they build an aqueduct. The, the sand covers a row of flagstones. <laughs> Look. <laughs> You're right. <gasps> What's underneath it, Diana? Underneath is a small tunnel. It's dry. Help me get these slabs up. We'll have a look. Uh, 
It looks big enough to wriggle through. Dinah, mm, you are a <laughs> copper-bottom treasure. It was Steve's idea. I'm not going to kiss Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Keep Tangy and the others out of here, Willie. We don't want them wondering what's going on. I'll go and see where this tunnel leads. She's all right. How long has she been gone? Half an hour? Here she comes now. Uh, come on, uh, Get go. <coughs> Thanks. It's a ten-minute wriggle to daylight, and it's outside the valley. Skeet flies back to Algiers tomorrow, doesn't he? That ought to do it. Why don't we just get out now? Because we'd be 400 yards away from Delicate and his guns with no transport. They'd find us in no time. So what are we going to do? Trust me, darling. The less you know, the better. Young Garvin, <coughs> you seem to be struggling with that stone. Stand aside. <coughs> be my guest. <laughs> I wouldn't want you to do yourself a mischief. I would hate to be forestalled. Perhaps this evening, Garvin, you and I in the arena. Do you realize, Dinah, that you are prospecting along the steps of a gladiatorial arena? Perhaps you will be standing in that very spot when your boyfriend here meets his death. Ah! Modesty! <gasps> Modesty, what is it? Snake was in the hole. Bit me as I was reaching down. Oh God! Uh, what should we do? Hey! 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 She's she's been bitten by a snake. All right. What's going on here? A horned viper. Must have disturbed it. Right. Oh. Get out of the way, Collier. Get back! Oh. Oh. Right. Better get your shot off. So we can have a wee look, huh? Oh. That's it. McQuirty, what's going on? Uh, she's, been, she's been bitten by a snake. A horned viper. They're poisonous, aren't they? Oh. She's lying. I don't think so, Delicata. Look, it's swollen around the puncture marks. Oh. And red. Here. Get your hands off her, you fool. Put her in the cell, alone. Oh. The rest of you, back to work. Please, in God's name, let me go with her. McQuirty! Shoot anyone who tries to help her. No, you can't do this. For God's sake, it's inhuman. You have to let us help her. You do not have any say here. Not again. Anyone else? Garvin? No? Well, take her away. Ah, Miss Pilgrim. It seems our friend Miss Blaze has been bitten by a horned viper. I am told the venom causes acute pain, copious bleeding, swelling and vomiting. She may die of kidney failure. I suppose her fate is in the lap of the gods now. No. Is someone with her? Let me go and help. Oh, no, no. That would interfere with the natural course of events. You monster! You'll rot in hell for this! Be careful, Miss Pilgrim. You may be useful to us, but I'm sure we can get by without you, if we have to. I advise you to knuckle down and find those jewels fast.
How do you feel? I'm all right, Steve. Oh, thank God. I was so scared. I'm fine, Dinah. Steve, I'm sorry. I faked the snake bite. It wasn't real. You faked it? Faked it? Shh, keep your voice down, Steve. I'm sorry I scared you like that, darling. I had to make it look good. Bloody hell, Modesty. I was going out of my mind. I know, but it was our best chance. I had to get McWhirter near enough to steal his notebook. McWhirter's notebook? What good is a stupid notebook? You'll see in a bit with any luck. How's it going, Willie? One more minute, Princess. Yeah, but I saw the bite. It looked awful. And there was a snake. How on earth... Puncture the skin with thorns, rub a little euphorbia sap around the wound, it swells up and turns red in seconds. But, well, you couldn't know McWhirter would grope you like that. I could be pretty sure. He poured me that first day when he searched us. Here, Princess, how does this look? That's McWhirter's writing, yeah, where it says, Once treasure raised, prep and execute rockfall burial of Tangy and party. Uh-huh. I wrote the next bit. Oh, Willy Love, that's a perfect copy of McWhirter's writing. Yeah. You missed your vocation. <laughs> Bow and arrows ready? Only three arrows. That should be enough for the guards. And I've made a couple of throwing knives. Good evening, folks. Hello, Skeet. Oh, ma'am. Uh, heard you got bit. It's not too bad. Found something, though. Ever seen McWhirter's... Notebook. Oh, tired of seeing it. The guy writes down when somebody blows his nose. We mean inside. Have a look. Here's a bit that might interest you. Hmm. Uh, disposal, Skeet Lowry and Skywagon. T-bomb for explosion in transit. Hmm. Well, it's the third time I've worked for Prestine. Didn't figure on a gold watch. Didn't reckon he'd finger me for the high jump, neither. We think this must be too big for him to leave any witnesses. Mm. Even you, Skeet. Well, ma'am, I reckon I just quit. You just got hired. You fly us out, Skeet. <sighs> it's too risky, ma'am. $20,000, Skeet, if you play it my way. If you don't, we sign you off right here. Willie can handle the plane. Well, she won't fly. Delicata holds the plugs. And you're carrying a spare set. You'd sooner lose an eye than let someone else control your plane. <laughs> Looks like you know me too well. A deal? A deal, ma'am. Right. Time to get going. Willie, Steve, the flagstones. Skeet, I want to have a word. Right, Professor Tangy. Guys. You're going to crawl down the tunnel for ten minutes, and then Ski here will get you onto the plane and fly us all out. Ski, you lead. Steve, you and Dinah bring up the rear. Modesty and I will be along later. Don't make a sound. Come on, Professor. Sit on the floor here. Oh, that's it. Well, there's not much room. Uh, you... Is it, uh, yeah, budge up a bit. Uh, uh, Miss Pilgrim? Yes? Uh, you and Steve up the front with me. Uh, You'll have to hunker down and keep still. She's only built for five passengers, so we don't have much leeway. Will she make it? Well, i got to warm her up a bit. Give her plenty of juice. But Modesty and Willie aren't here yet. Brother, she sure needs everything for this load. Well, what the hell are you doing? Oh, we can't leave them. Hey, sit down! Felt that takeoff, you'd be glad we didn't have an extra packet of cigarettes on board. But oh my god, be happy we made it, Steve. They're still down there with that monster. The plane, Delicata, it's leaving. What the hell's happening? They've got out. Take your weapon, McWhirter. Shoot on sight. Tell the guards. Shoot who? They've gone. Do it! Right, Princess. If we lay low here for an hour or two, I reckon they'll calm down. Think we're all on the plane. Then, we can sneak over to the stores and pick up some food and water for the trek. See over there, there's a sort of mobile derrick. Could that be useful? Wind's southwesterly, isn't it? 
could probably rig up some sort of sand yacht. It's good to be just the two of us again, Willy Love. Mm. No one else to worry about. Damn. Solo operator. No chance of a quiet getaway now. We'll have to finish it here. We'll make for the control room. I'll break right behind those rocks. You take him. I'll grab his gun. Back, Roger! There's no one in the cell. I know that! Make a search of the site. You think they're still here? The plane couldn't carry all of them, fool. Garvin at least must be here somewhere. Yes, Garvin. He's the heaviest. There they are! Get out there! I... Four guards left. Then there's McWhirter and Deli Carter, of course. Uh, I've got one knife left, Princess. You? Three arrows. I'll go over the roof, come down from above. I'll deal with McWhirter. If I come in the front way, can you take Deli Carter? <laughs> It'll be a pleasure. Bloody hell. I knew it. Should have killed him when we had the chance, but no, 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 no. He wouldn't listen. Abdul? Where are you? Up here. That was a mountain storm throw. But the throttling is my variation. McQuarter? McQuarter, are you there? Damn it. Blundering fool. Oi, King Kong. This is from Dinah's sister. <laughs> Nice one, Willie. Yeah. What about McWhirter? I signed him off. The other guards are running away. Oh, come here, princess. Looks like time's on our side at last. <sighs> I'm sorry I ever involved you in the Musa thing. I never dreamt it would turn into such a dangerous affair. We'd have got involved with or without you, Sir Gerald. You know it. And we all made it out in one piece. Only just. You don't have to do this as well. You know me better than that. I came here to finish it. All right. Well, I'd better go. My appointment with Prestain is at 11. I'll go and join Willie at the boat. I rather expected you to call on me before this, Sir Gerald. <laughs> Is this uh, an official visit? Uh, no, Sir Howard. What have Steve Collier and the blind girl said? Nothing. They've been waiting for Modesty Blaze and Willie Garvin to appear, which happened just over a week ago. Ah. <laughs> Do they have news of Delicata? Yes. He's dead. I see. They must be very good indeed. Yes. Now, I always swim at 11. Could you come to the point? There used to exist a rather quaint custom. If a gentleman was found to have embezzled the mess funds, he was given a revolver and invited to withdraw to his bedroom where he blew his brains out. Ah, as you say, quaint. I can think of nothing to which shooting myself would be the preferred alternative. Oh, I can. Modesty Blaze will kill you if you don't. Revenge? Or self-protection? Neither. She simply says you have to go. If you don't, you'll kill more people. People like Aronson and Dinah Pilgrim's sister. And she won't have it. <laughs> yeah, I, I know one adopts certain attitudes for public consumption about the little people. But really, Tarrant, are you pretending they actually have any importance? I'm not pretending. More to the point, neither is Modesty Blaze. Well, I have no intention of living under threat. And I fancy I can call on more resources than she can. Bernard, call the special numbers. You won't consider taking a revolver to your bedroom? No, oh, please. Don't be naive. Thank you for calling, Sir Gerald. Goodbye. Yes, here it is. 
Sir Howard Prestane, millionaire industrialist and philanthropist, went for his morning swim at his villa in Cat Ferrar and failed to return. A week later, his body was washed up about ten miles down the coast. Drowned, apparently. Well, well. And us just back from the south of France, too, as it happens. How is Dinah after her ordeal, Willie? I like that girl very much. And I had hoped I would see Steve here tonight. Where is he? Well, um, it's rather embarrassing. Uh, the thing is, Sir G, we got jilted. Oh. Oh, I am sorry. What, both of you? Yeah. I was all set to go respectable, I think. Me too. I was going to be made an honest woman of. Well, I hadn't decided. But if anyone was going to decide, I expected it to be me. Anyway, the upshot is Dinah and Steve have got together. In fact, they're getting married. Well, that must have been a bit of a blow for you both. Well, I think they got pretty close in Musa. Funny thing is, I told Dinah to lean on Steve so he'd feel needed. I told him the same thing. Oh, well. I'm sorry. Uh, so, what are you going to do now? I suppose you could go back and dig up that treasure. Some other time. That reminds me, Princess. You must have dropped about 8,000 quid paying off Skeet Lowry, so I reckon we ought to cover that. Hold out your hand. There you are. <gasps> oh, Willie, you didn't! <laughs> Good heavens! Rubies! Are they real? They're the size of hen's eggs. Those are the carbuncles of the Garamantes. Well, one three hundredth of them. I thought I'd take a couple, you know, for overheads. But I already covered it. I sold short and pressed stain holdings two days before we... before he died. That left just enough to pay Skeet and break even. I don't understand. I thought you hadn't found the treasure by the time you left. Well, Dinah located it before we even got there. She just didn't tell him. <laughs> Told me, though. <laughs> the minx. And you kept that quiet. Well, if you don't want them, why don't we set them in a pair of napkin rings and they can be Dinah and Steve's wedding present. I'll drink to that. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>